Hey guys, it's Coach Alex here from Fast Fitness Tips. Today I'm going to tackle an issue right on the head that's been in the news almost every day for the last few weeks. And that is this explosive report from the House of Commons. The British House of Commons have produced this report on combating doping in sport in which they throw accusations, some of you may or may not agree with them, they throw accusations at Team Sky, Team Sky's management, David Brailsford et al., and also, of course, Bradley Wiggins, two 2012 tour winner. And also caught up in it really is Chris Froome as well, who's currently under investigation, of course. Now, the report basically says that the riders, Wiggins and others associated with him, were, in quotes, using these drugs, i.e. Um, anti-asthma drugs, beyond the requirement for therapeutic use indication, they were actually using it for unfair gain, Basically cheating. For you and I, we would say that's cheating. They're using it to gain an unfair advantage above their competitors. Now, what drugs are we talking about here? Well, we're talking about the anti-asthma drugs. Now, the one that Froome is caught up in, you know, is the high-dose high dose salbutamol bronchodilator, which is inhaled, of course. Now, it turns out that if you look up the details online, you know, in the medical literature, whether salbutamol is performance-enhancing, there's a very modest effect. In fact, some people would say there isn't really an effect. So inhaled uh, anti-asthma drugs probably aren't a real red flag because their performance enhancing potential is so small. But what is a red flag are those injectable drugs, particularly steroids. And there is one, <laughs> there's one particular steroid that's in the news all the time, this triamcinolone, which has been reported in the medical literature to be roughly eight times stronger than prednisolone. And prednisolone is a strong anti-inflammatory catabolic steroid, meaning that it has effects on body weight, on your body fuels, on your immune system, and on your body composition. So this is a major red flag then that Team Sky have been caught up in. Today, I want to raise some issues, some questions that haven't been clearly answered and I want you guys to tell me whether you think these accusations leveled at Team Sky are fair or unfair. Now one quite interesting thing that I've come across recently is what was Chris Froome's position himself on Bradley Wiggins and Team Sky? Because he initially told Cycling News in around 2016, in quotes, it's impossible to say if Bradley Wiggins was operating in a grey area. In other words, there is some doubt in his mind on the validity of therapeutic use exemptions. And in fact, he said he was offered a TUE by Team Sky in 2015, but he himself said, I didn't feel having a TUE in the last week of the tour was something I was prepared to do. It didn't sit well morally with me. But interestingly, he's come out this week, as you'll see online, and said that he's fully supportive of Wiggins. Now, that's interesting, given the rivalry between Wiggins and Froome in the last couple of years. So he's come out and said, no, that's absolute rubbish. I've seen the accusation and that's absolute rubbish. I've learned this through the media as well. I wasn't even aware that Bradley was using it. So he wasn't aware, but it's still rubbish. So he's, how can he be so sure if he wasn't aware what was going on? Hmm. Team Sky themselves obviously have denied any wrongdoing as had Wiggins. Wiggins said it's a, basically a smear campaign. It's the worst thing in the world to be accused of. It's the hardest thing to prove that you're doing the right thing. Team Sky have said, you know, uh, we're whiter than white. We strongly refuse this allegation. But let's take a step back for a minute. Ask yourself, what is going on in the world of cycling regarding TUEs? TUEs are there to help unwell or sick riders. But the use of TUEs seem to be out of control right now. If you check the WADA annual report, in 2013, there were 636 approved uses of TUEs. In 2014, they granted 897. And by 2016, they granted 2,000 allowances of TUEs in cycling. This seems to be a problem that's out of control. But if you go onto the wider, wider website and look up reasons for TUE and go into asthma, you get this chart of physician management of asthma, which basically says that in 99% of cases, you can get away with an inhaled anti-asthma drug. There's almost no reason to give a steroid 
not injectable anyway and not for you know highly performing athletes is not really required and they themselves say glucocorticoids i.e steroids are prohibited in competition and require tue in advance ideally 30 days or more in advance now if you doubt that injectable steroids are powerful check out this new york times article by david miller about how to get away with doping where he gives a very interesting behind the scenes account of what it's like to take triamcinolone and similar drugs. He says he's used it three times and it had a massive catabolic effect. And what it does, he says, is to get rid of the excess fat that I hadn't been able to get rid of myself, no matter how strict my diet. It takes you to a level beyond what you can naturally do physiologically. Now, for any of you that are particularly interested in this, you can look up online the UCI regulations on TUEs and anti-doping. And if you just scroll down here to section four, it's got a whole list of regulations about TUEs. And one that I pick out of the star is 46.4. There must be no reasonable alternative to the use of a prohibited substance. So you must be using the least harmful, the least harmful option. You shouldn't go for the strongest injectable option. You should go for the least harmful option. And in regard to this, Professor Brian Lipworth of the Scottish Centre for Respiratory Research is cited online as saying that it would be utterly bonkers, in quotes, to prescribe triamcinolone to treat asthma when there are so many alternatives with least or less harmful side effects. Unless, in brackets, and I'm adding this, unless, in brackets, you were after an additional effect which, um, you know, wasn't just to treat the asthma itself. Now, in order to get away with this, you know, prescription of a stronger than necessary drug, clearly somebody has to be complicit in it, either the organization or the medics responsible. Now, Team Sky told the committee in written evidence submitted in March 17 that one of their doctors, Steve Peters' responsibilities as Team Sky's clinical director was to review the notes to keep accurate medical records to ensure the records were properly uploaded to Dropbox, etc. And later we find out that this is all a complete mess. And either the medical team, Dr. Freeman, Dr. Peters, etc., haven't done their job, or things have gone missing mysteriously, or you know something else has happened which results in there being no real evidence. So at the very least, whatever's gone on there behind the scenes seems to be subject to a shocking level of medical record keeping and as a result wind the clock forward the committee have recommended that the GMC actually look into these issues but from another perspective maybe the medics are a fall guy for pressure in Team Sky you know who knows what was going on there I don't know but this is what the committee is saying what we do know and what also looks very suspicious is that Team Sky kept ordering lots of powerful drugs, you know, between 2010 and 2013, over a four-year period. Team Sky, for example, ordered 55 ampules of triamcinolone. They also ordered testosterone patches. That's another news story in the press this week. And possibly the opiate painkiller, Tramadol. Now, in parallel to the Team Sky medics who were doing what is perhaps required of the organization. It's also the medics working for WADA and in effect UCI. Now their job is to scrutinize and approve these TUE applications and potentially refuse them because maybe the teams are putting pressure to bring these forward but the panel, it's meant to be a panel that sits with WADA, is meant to evaluate it and give, you know, like an independent decision. Now the thing is, when you actually look online as to how this approval would was actually granted regarding the Wiggins case, and it's in the parliamentary report, it turns out that each of the applications was only given by a single doctor, Mario Zorzoli. There's also this odd situation about uh, so-called backdating. There's an excellent blog online. It's actually called Velocity and Vitality. Dave Smith is the author where he talks about this issue. And he says there's a very uncomfortable he issue in the timeline because Wiggins 2011 TUE was dated in June, 
when his examination was actually done in July, so effectively it was backdated. But UCI Rule 46 says that the ridership application for TUE, no less than 21 days, sometimes it's said on 30 days actually, from when the rider needs approval. Now another interesting site on this issue worth looking up is this one from Sports Integrity Initiative and they outline this whole issue from beginning to end quite well. They also point out that Shane Sutton, former Team Sky so coach, said TUEs were part of their marginal gains performance strategy, saying that they're actually, you know, part of their strategy to win was to use TUEs apparently. It's also said on this site that in looking into the TUE uh, examples, not just with Wiggins, but other British and international athletes, more than 40 altogether, with caught up in this kind of brewing scandal that in many times their medical records were either not done or altered so yeah we've got this issue that there's a lack of medical records from team sky but in other organizations there's even worse where the medical records have been altered altogether so we're now at a crossroads it seems of not knowing what to do with tues now some People uh, originally in 2016, 17, most notably Paul DeMio online, suggested that TUEs are open to abuse and perhaps this is the time, it's on Eurosport actually, should be scrapped. He was the first one pretty much. And this week, Garen Thomas has come out and said he agrees with that, you know, TUEs probably should be scrapped. He's come out and said if you suffer asthma so severely that over the counter medications, that don't require TUE, such as salbutamol, aren't effective, right? they're not working. It's unfortunate, but maybe you're too unwell. Maybe your body isn't built for the rigors, rigors of professional support. And I can certainly see where it's coming from. This is like the illness paradox. If you need a TUE, you're ill, yeah? So don't compete. If you don't need a TUE, you're not that ill, so you can compete. Some people have even gone further. In fact, uh, look who's talking. Floyd Landis has come out and said, in his view, Wiggins' 2012 title is under so much suspicion that perhaps he should be stripped of it, which is pretty severe, but, you know, it's not impossible. Now, I've done a lot of talking there about TUEs, but I haven't given many solutions other than to say, you know, punish those involved or, you know, scrap TUEs altogether. But I, but I can also give you a slightly more sophisticated response, and this is to do with the idea of a washout period. So have a think about this for a second. We've got therapeutic uses and they are potentially useful for those that are unwell. But for most people, they've got a mild condition such as exercise-induced asthma, okay? Let's say you have that. It's not really a clear formal medical diagnosis. It could be made quite simply, i.e. suspected medical condition. It probably doesn't have significant long-term functional effects. And you would, with simple treatment, be able to train and race normally. And to treat this, you'd have over-the-counter simple medications like an inhaled salbutamol inhaler. And I would say that for those that don't take that, those drugs are not, you know, to treat that, you don't need a TUE. You just need a normal over-the-counter medication at any time in competition or out of competition. And therefore, you can race as normal. You know, there's no restriction. And the point, the key point is there's no additional performance enhancing benefit that anyone could really gain from taking an inhaler. That's the, that's the key thing about that end. Now, in the moderate category, you've got some people with a known medical condition. It's subject to a clear medical opinion and diagnosis. It probably would have definite functional, i.e. power, decremental effects, but it is probably temporary, i.e. relating to a short medical illness rather than long-term, lifelong. But the person might struggle to train whilst unwell and they would struggle to race whilst unwell. And I would say they should have what I would call a restricted use of TUEs, a TUE list with mild or moderate effects. Very unlikely to be long-term major performance enhancing drugs like not injectable steroids, for example. And they could enter, in my opinion, a pro race. Now, most people would say eight days. That's what's been suggested before. So-called eight-day washout or clean-out rest period. But we could even bump that up, I think, to up to three months. So what I'm saying is, if you've got a diagnosed clear medical illness and you definitely need a TUE, a TUE would be, you know, in relation to a strong restricted list of medication, then by all means take it, but don't, don't go into pro race 
within a certain period. I'm putting out a very harsh three month period, but others would say, yeah, eight days. Okay, so that's fine. And then at the severe end, we've got people with known chronic medical conditions. They've probably been hospitalized for that condition, but because of the registration of your illness, you wouldn't be racing at the pro level. Come on. I will say, having said all this, it's still a mess to consider why TUEs are unrestricted out of competition. You know, TUEs should be subject to these rules all year round, in my opinion. Also a bit of a mess, and I haven't answered this, but I'm going to loop back now to this question, the primary question posed at the beginning. Is Bradley Wiggins a cheat? Really? Has he done anything wrong? You know, or is he correct in saying he's been harshly treated? You know, and this is a little bit of a witch hunt. Or in his words, this is malicious. Somebody's trying to smear me. These allocations are the worst thing to be accused of. And I want to show you this via uh, this little chart to end. What is cheating? So I want to show you this little chart of what is cheating. Just reflect on the basics for a second. What is cheating? Well, cheating is, in my opinion, dishonestly gaining an unfair advantage over your colleagues, over your competitors in the race. Now, from what we can tell from the parliamentary report, he used a drug which has potentially, well, definite performance enhancing effects. So, yes, he could be have said to have gained an unfair advantage, providing he didn't just come up to normal, but his performance was increased, which is very likely, you know, from the power to weight ratio, although we haven't analyzed the figures was it done dishonestly? That's a question. I don't know. We can't answer that, but it wasn't disclosed. It was subject to this leak, which is highly suspicious of dishonest, but maybe somebody told him to do it in Team Sky. We don't know that. But here's the question, guys. We don't know whether other teams were doing exactly the same. And of course, this is like the Lance Armstrong story. If everyone was cheating, if everyone was, let's say, using a drug, I should say, then cheating isn't really the correct term because you're using a drug to come up to where they are not to gain an advantage over them. So you have to be careful when you say he was definitely cheating because we don't really know what his colleagues were doing. Now, we could also say, was it illegal? I did he not follow the official rules. And if you go through the rules in detail, a lot of things were not done correctly. But some of the things were apparently not done correctly by WADA and UCI, not just by Team Sky and Wiggins. And the third component is, was it immoral? And that is, did it not do, did it not follow what most rational people is think is reasonable? And most rational non-cyclists would say, oh, this is crazy. This is a clear case of immoral drug use. Therapeutic use exemptions are being used unfairly here. It's certainly immoral. It's probably illegal against the UCI regulations if rules are bent, and it may be cheating. But he would say, Wiggins would say, well, it wasn't illegal. No one has said I've done anything wrong. I wasn't doing anything maybe that my competitors weren't doing. I just was brought up to normal. And I don't care whether it's immoral or not, because within my group of the world, within my view of the world, I pro cyclists, they don't necessarily share the same opinion of, as the public as a whole. Wow. This is a complex area, guys. And I'm not, I'm not pretending to have all the answers. In fact, I only have all the questions. You guys tell me what you think in the comments below. And as always, guys, have a great ride. If you can, check out our Patreon site on the link below. We really appreciate your support. A lot of people have been supporting us while we've been busy doing other things. Till next time.